devices. Right. So it's anything from uh, Facebook. Uh, they don't currently have a Windows Phone or Windows 8 specific authentication platform, but what you can use is their HTML5 or RESTful interface to then talk um, to your Windows Phone or Windows 8 app. Very cool. uh, Google has the same thing. Uh, Microsoft has uh, identity, um, uh, direct identity. So we have a number of ways we can kind of work with uh, developers to authenticate users who are going in there. This way, anybody and everyone can't just jump in and add to the leaderboard. So right now I have it open for everyone, but let's take a step back. We also have the URL or the endpoint for where this actually exists too. So I click on this URL, pops up here, and you see it just says this mobile service is up and running. Perfect, looks good to me. Let's take a step back. So now we have our mobile service up and running. Let's have a better understanding of, of what this is exactly and how it can help us out. So you see right here this little middle ground this is the actual mobile service. This is what we were just looking at a moment ago. On the right-hand side, I have the SQL database, and that's where all this table data is stored. Again, that was the unique ID, the username, and the score. On the left-hand side here, we're showcasing a tablet um, and a screen of some sort to illustrate how we can go back and forth in our Unity game to this back-end mobile service and then pull from this database. So I could, in theory, have a website looking at your leaderboard. Maybe I want some services integrated on the website side. Right. Maybe I have uh, Windows Phone, Windows 8. My game's across iOS, Android. Yeah. I do uh, similar services, a multi-platform Xamarin application. All those things can point up to that same leaderboard using the same API. Absolutely. Everything. That is amazing. Yep. So you can amazing. limit to one specific <laughs> platform, or you can open up to just about everybody to hit that same backend service. Very cool. Okay. So how does Unity handle DLLs? Well, first of all, let's understand exactly what a DLL is. What is a DLL? Okay. A DLL is a dynamically linked library. Essentially, it's a collection of code and or data which may be used by several applications. So let's include libraries or modules. So really, this is just common methods or things that we're going to have to use over and over. So essentially, we write them once and try to make them available to as many platforms as possible because they're going to share a lot of the same functionality. So with Prime 31 in this case, we have several DLLs um, that the developer had wrote that are available to us in our project. So the first thing we need to understand is how Unity handles these actual DLLs. So inside of our Assets folder, which is the main root folder for all of your Unity projects. Everything's in Assets? That's right. Everything. We have a Plugins folder. So sometimes you can be willy-nilly and name things however you like in Unity, but in this particular case, this folder has got to be called Plugins. Now by default, Prime31 has already created a folder called Plugins for us, and then we have platform-specific folders on top of that. So That's we have helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So we have Metro and uh, WP8. So those are already designed by Unity. And what happens is when you're building or compiling your Unity project, Unity will first do a, a quick run through, put everything together, and grab everything inside the assets, uh, assets slash plugins folder. It then does another pass, and it looks for um, platform-specific folders, in this case, Metro and Windows Phone 8. And what happens is if there is a, another plugin or another DLL that has identical names, it'll then take the first one, say, okay, you're not very specific because you're just in the plugins folder, but I see you have a very specific one and I'm building for Windows Phone, so I'm going to take that one in the plugins folder, get rid of it, and I'm just going to overwrite what was originally mm. there. This way it knows, okay, there must be a reason why you have this in a platform-specific folder. Okay, installing the plugin itself. Let's come over here and I'll show you. You see? Just like any other asset, I, could down, I would download the Prime 31 from that link in my email. I would open this up, and Prime 31's plugin uh, or asset would look just like this. I have a plugins folder, Metro, Metro Azure, and Windows Phone 8. So Metro Azure actually just holds the scene and the data specific to this actual project. You see inside my plugins folder, I have um, three different folders we just went over, and the DLLs. So that's P31 Metro Azure and P31 RestKit. So what these are is uh, platform-specific plugins that Prime31 has already taken care of for us. This is what allows us to at least um, run the plugin inside of our Unity project. So there are essentially functions or methods that are empty. There's not much going on in there because they can't connect to our backend just yet. Not quite yet. Almost. Right. Almost there. 
And that's why I mentioned during the first few slides that you can open this up and take a look at our project, but we can't connect anything just yet. So inside Metro Azure, which is really just my scene folder at this moment, so you have three different classes in here, uh, my leaderboard class, my Metro Azure demo UI, and my to-do item, which we're not even going to use at this point. Let's open up this scene, and you'll see we have main camera and UI. Let's hit play, see how it pops up. Oh, it does not want to open up for me, or expand at least. Let's go to... Uh, where's maximize on play or scene? There we go. Here's my scene. Okay, so you see on the top left here, I have the Azure endpoint. And again, that's that same web address that we were looking at earlier. We checked it before and she said, hey, you're up and running. All good to go. So that's the, the house or address that we're actually going to. That's the most important piece of the equation. That's right. <laughs> that's got to that, be up and running. Without, without that, you're in trouble. We're going to be a little lost along the way there. Moving down, we then have our application key. So like I said before, this is a long string of text that uh, serves as our key to get through. So before, I said we made this available to just about anybody. I didn't want to overly complicate things, so I made it so anyone who has this key can then connect to our leaderboard. Hit this little button, and it would ideally connect to our Azure service. Moving over to the right here, we have our username, which again, I can add any name at this point. Right now, it's just looking for whatever is in this input field. It would then uh, add it to my mobile service. I have a score. Um, ideally, as your game is going along, perhaps you're incrementing your score for every enemy you destroy or basket you get through the hoop. Um, and I can insert that into the leaderboard. So if I can adjust this a little more, this is kind of set. Do you know why this screen will not open up larger for me? You want to go to the, uh, which one for the game tab? Yes. You can do a shift spacebar. Shift spacebar. Ah, there we go. And it went away on me. If you want your uh, game tab, you have to get out of that and then go over to, uh, yeah, the windows are kind of little. Yeah. <laughs> go to that game tab, and then you can do, or maximize on play either one. Oh, this is looking for maximize on play. Okay, so we have our username, our score. I can then insert these things into the leaderboard. And then same thing here. Once I connect to Azure, I could hit these buttons to list all the items in the leaderboard, or I could query all scores that are less than or equal to 200. So like I said before, uh, this plugin requires DLLs to work, but Unity itself cannot understand these DLLs until they actually build the whole project. So if I hit these buttons here, nothing's going to happen. It's going to be unresponsive. You're going to see my uh, little debug information right here on the bottom. See, so connecting to Azure Mobile Service, endpoint, but nothing's actually happening. So let's get out of this and understand what's going on. So you have installing the plugin. So we have our plugin, or our scene, at least up and running. Now I've got, actually got to build this project. So I go up here to File, Build Settings. Look at all those platforms. That's right. It's one of the selling <laughs> points behind Unity for us, right? So you see I've already gone ahead and included the current scene I have right here. This is my Metro Azure test scene. I have type set to C-sharp project. So I'm going to be very careful here and let you know that the C++ projects will not work at this point. Right now, it has to be a C-sharp uh, solution. Also, it's set for Windows 8.1 SDK. And then you don't need to have uh, the C-sharp projects here. What this is, is allows you to edit your um, Unity scripts within one instance of Visual Studio at a time. So one thing of note I want to make very clear here again as well is player settings. See this button right here? Let's click on this. I've seen the inspector window on the right-hand side popped up. So, on these settings... All your platform-specific settings across whether it's Windows Store, Windows yes. Phone, Web Builds, iOS, Android, etc. All the goodies are right there. Yep. And a lot of these, what they'll do essentially is alter um, the app manifest file within Visual Studio. So you can do it here, or you can often do it in the app manifest itself. But for this particular plugin, what we're going to have to do is go over here to Publishing Settings. Give myself a little more space to work with. And beforehand, if I hadn't edited this at all, it would say unprocessed plugins. And say size zero. And I have the first element in the array here that says P31 Metro Azure DLL. Very important. Would you like to explain this and how, how the, uh, the um, processing works in Unity? 
they do uh, some DL rewriting, so they actually look at DLLs and they reprocess it. Um, they rewrite some information on there so they can kind of uh, hook into it. Yes. So as part of that, um, they need to be in that list to kind of just leave it alone for the most part. Okay. So it, Unity will also always process plugins. It's just a matter of um, how many times it does it. So in this case, we're saying um, if it's unprocessed, it's not going to do two pass processing, <laughs> which it normally does. Unprocessed do it means time. still process once, yes. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. So in this case, we need to add that to uh, add our Prime 31 Metro Azure DLL. So what is that exactly? Well, it's right here in our plugins folder. So if I click on plugins, it is this one right here, P31 Metro Azure DLL. So all we're saying is, hey, we only want you to process this one time and not twice. So it's very critical that we do this. If you miss this key step, your project will not build. Finally, for capabilities, your project will still build just fine here, but if you do not click internet client, um, and you go to build your project and then deploy it to our Metro store, uh, it'll not pass certification. So what will happen is uh, Microsoft will look at your app and say, hey, you're trying to connect to the internet here, but you didn't tell us about this. So what Microsoft's assuming is you're trying to do something malicious. You're not informing the user of what is going on. So in that case, I click internet client, and now the user and I both know, hey, to use this application, we're gonna need to talk to the internet in some way. So now we have our scene included, and those small changes done to our uh, player settings. So if you don't tell that, you will fail. Yes. Fail certification and your, your application just won't work. That's right. Hit build. And like we've done before, I enjoy uh, keeping a, a clean project. So what I'll do is I have my Prime 31 project. I go to my builds folder, and I like to create a new folder for each project I'm working on. So we call it Metro. Again, the naming scheme doesn't matter here. It's just for simplicity and staying organized. So click on my Metro folder. And now we're going to see it's going to build my player here. It's going to take just a moment. See, post-processing. There we go. It's working its magic. And in just a moment, we'll have this folder pop up with our new Visual Studio solution. As soon as it's done, we will be good to go. And there we go. I know it's successfully nice. built my project. Very nice. Always a comforting sign. I know. You kind of wait for builds to finish. I mean, in yeah. any technology, you're building, you're waiting. Mm -hmm. It's like you hold your breath for a couple of seconds. And the long builds are the worst because you're waiting a long time. Yeah. Like, you know, if it's like a three, four, five, eight minute build, sometimes in the middle of the process, you have a bug. Not just, I mean, not in Unity in particular, but any projects we worked at. Absolutely. Uh, some big projects in some past companies that took a long time to build. Yeah. And I see why I became a web developer where you don't have to compile the code. <laughs> That you just wait till the client reports a JavaScript issue. That's it. <laughs> Bug feature. <laughs> so now within our builds folder, I have my Metro folder, and you can see I have my new solution called Prime 31 Azure. I'll open this up, latest version of Visual Studio. Remember, I mentioned before we have to download the uh, Azure Mobile Services SDK first to get this to work. Without that SDK, this project will not allow you to connect to uh, our backend. So we can close the other solutions here. Right now, I'm looking at Prime 31 Azure. And as you've seen many times throughout the last two days, I've got to change the debug um, settings on this. So right now, go to Conman, as we used to call it, Configuration Manager. Conman, nice. And set to uh, ARM and ARM tablet. But of course, I'm not currently building on an ARM tablet. I'm using an x86 machine. So go down to x86, make that change. And again, this only has to be done the first time that I go to build that folder. After that, that change is saved there. Go to Close, and Local machine. So you saw right there, getting NuGet packages. So uh, this NuGet package does not come with Prime 31, but it's uh, essentially a NuGet soft JSON that allows me to parse the JSON on my back end uh, for my mobile service and then bring it into my Unity game itself. Hmm. So uh, I've already gone and put that together in this project. I'm in the sample, so it'll include it in your project as soon as you go to launch it. We see deploy started in the bottom left-hand side. Unity's popped up. Thank you for letting me know I can always switch between the apps. As <laughs> soon as it finishes building, there we I'll go. Get rid of this. Okay, we'll leave it there for now. But you can see this project is identical to what we were looking at before in our Unity uh, browser. But now the catch is I can connect to my uh, mobile service in the background. So again, I have my endpoint right here. So that's the address I'm trying to reach with all this information. I have my application key. I'm going to connect to the Azure service. So I hit connect. doesn't look like anything happens. So maybe I'm sweating a little bit. But hey, let's take a moment, see what's going on over here. So 
my call stack, where is my output here, or my debug? They have changed this on me. Windows, no, 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 no. Where is the console log on this machine? Debug window output, I believe. 